Fabulous people, welcome to the channel for all the vibes who create their own life trends. My name is Anastasia, and today here I am live. I couldn't wait to talk to you guys. I know I haven't done live in what two weeks, which is it's normal for me, but I missed you guys. So here I am with lots of new information and updates that I truly hope will help you to travel to Europe in 2021. A few, oh, what's that called? House maintenance rules. <laughs> I'm starting to forget my English after being in Europe for so long. Um, if you're watching this live after I'm done, please remember to smash that like button. And of course, if you're new to my channel to subscribe, because you guys know it helps me so much and you know how much work goes into every single video. So I would be so grateful if you press that like button, subscribe. And yes, please remember that even after this live is done, you can ask me, any questions, just leave it in the comment down below and I promise I will respond to everyone. I always do so. It is very, very important for me guys to let you know that don't feel bad if you um, watching this and it's not live and you're like, ah, darn it, I could have asked her a question and now it's over. Don't worry, feel free to just ask me anything, okay, in the comments down below. So those are the things that I wanted to uh, let you guys know before I start with my regular updates, guys, because I do have quite a few important pieces of information. I already see likes that are beginning. So thank you so much, guys. And the first piece of information is so good, guys. I am so happy that I found this for you in case those of you who... Um, don't know about this website yet but this website guys is gold it is so so good and it is for anyone who will be traveling to europe it's not only for let's say greece or italy it's for every single european union country so it doesn't matter if you are planning on going to spain portugal italy greece this website is going pretty much to straighten out everything for you. And what exactly it does, it pretty much tells you, you will enter the country of where you're, where you're going, where you're coming from, the country where you're going, and it will give you all the rules, all the regulations, all the updates, everything that you need to know to travel from your destination to the destination, well, from your place to the destination where you're going. And the coolest thing about this place or this website, it will also give you guys, if you have to do any transits, because a lot of you are asking me, for example, Anastasia, I am flying to Italy, but I'm transiting through London Heathrow Airport and I'm coming from US. What do I do? What rules? What things do I need? So this website is literally going to tell you, you will enter your country, let's say US, and then you will say, I am going to Greece. And then you will say, I'm transiting through this country or I'm visiting this country and this country. And it will literally show you what are the requirements of each place and what you need in order for you to travel stress-free. So it's just, it's gold, guys. It will give you, as I said, all the rules and regulations of the country where you're traveling, if you need to do quarantine, if you need to do any testing. It will also um give you all the late pretty much latest updates when it comes to i'm um, looking i have my notes here with me it also pretty much will tell you exactly what's happening in that country live so if there are a, if there are any updates any important updates in that country this website updates pretty much 24 7 so in case you know you are about to fly out and you need to check something really quick so this website is gold guys i'm so happy to find it for you because this is going to just 
save you so much, so much stress and trying to search through the internet and trying to find out all the information. Do I need this? Do I not need this? So this is good stuff. So the website, and by the way, I have this website in the link in the description below. So when you go in the description of this live, the link to that website is going to be there. All you have to do is just click on it and it will take you directly to that website. But the website name is reopen.europa.eu. Okay, and then you can select the language because it can be in many different languages. I believe in the link in the description, I already have English language selected for you guys. But just in case, so you know, it can be in French, it can be in Italian, it can be in English. So this website, anyone can browse pretty much. But guys, this is going to be so helpful when it comes to you traveling to Europe this summer or in general in 2021. This is just such a good website, guys. Check it out. You're going to absolutely love it. Love it, love it. This is gold. All right. And oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention the reason why I also love this website, because this is the website that has been officially created by the European Union. So, you know, every piece of information there is legit because what happens is I do travel updates for you. And then I see some of the travel updates, even the ones that I've done, right? Maybe one month passed by and that some of that information is no longer valid. And the same goes for other YouTubers or news or whatever. And it is hard sometimes to figure out for you guys, okay, is this is the last update or maybe there is another update that is coming. So I just want to give this to you guys because for me, you know, I can just say, oh, keep watching my channel, keep doing, and of course, keep watching because I am constantly giving you more and more and more useful information, all the references, all the updates, live, etc. But at the same time, I want to make sure that you are staying up to date with all the information that is going on. So I know that this website is going to give you that. All right. So this is important for me, guys. I want you to really have the best resources at just at your fingertips at any point. And I will keep doing that, guys, for you. So it will it will never stop. Um, my goal is really to make your travel to Europe as stress free as possible this year, next year. Ever. <laughs> it's forever, guys. Um, then another thing that I wanted to mention. And another thing I wanted to mention, guys, and this is kind of my personal opinion. And by the way, don't be shy. Say hello. I see some of you here. Please feel free to say hi. I know how it is to be the first one to say hello, but here I am, guys, in front of you going live. <laughs> so feel free to ask any questions that you want, even right now. I'm here. So this is, this is your opportunity. Um, but what I wanted to mention, guys, and this is just my personal opinion. I know when you're flying, let's say from the States or from Canada across the ocean to Europe, a lot of times you want to visit as many countries as possible because I know it's not a flight that you take twice a year or once a year. When you go to Europe, most of you really commit. And I know that some of you plan this trip for two or three or four years. So of course, once you're in Europe, the temptation to see as many countries as possible, I know it's very, very big, but what I truly recommend if you are coming to Europe this year is to try to avoid doing that because every single country in Europe has their own rules and regulations when it comes to, when it comes to traveling this year. So what happens a lot of times is that Let's say Italy is going to have different rules and regulations than Greece. And the same goes for Spain and Portugal. And then you end up to just have to follow so many different updates from so many different countries. And then on top of that, some of your traveling or some of your flights can get canceled or rescheduled. And there is just so much 
to keep up with. And I am all about stress-free vacations. I really am, guys. That's why I don't go, let's say, to Greece and see five islands in five days. I love exploring, but at the same time, I love to take it easy and really feel like I'm on vacation instead of just rushing from one place to another just so I can say back home that I've seen, you know, 20, 20 places in Europe. So what I strongly recommend for you guys, and again, this is just my personal opinion, is to take it easy if you are planning on traveling to Europe this year and to visit one at most two countries and just, yeah, more than that, I, I wouldn't do it, guys. I would stick to, to really just a few, uh, well, a couple of countries if you can. That would be just the most ideal thing. Or one, then it's really stress-free. All you have to do is just get a ticket from, sorry, guys, I'm sliding on my chair. Then you can just go really straight, get a straight ticket. That's another thing. Don't try to get tickets with different stops. I know sometimes it's a money saver, but guys, sometimes that can really backfire this year. So what I would recommend is to get a straight flight, be it from just US to whatever is your destination and Trust me, guys, it will just it will just save you so much time and money and uh, and your nerve cells. Another thing that I have to mention since we're on the topic of flights is that what I hear from a lot of YouTubers and a lot of updates, and this is something that I want to pitch in, is that a lot of people saying that um, traveling right now and arriving to the airports is very stressful. You need to come to the airport three hours in advance, four hours in advance, be there. The lines are super long. It's a total mess. And guys, I've been traveling Europe for the past five months. And I mean, intensely traveling, right? You guys seen all of my videos on Greece and now I'm in Italy. So I honestly can tell you that it is not what most people are talking about. I don't know if it's just me, guys, but traveling right now, at the, even at the airports, things are very, very calm. It's, I would not say that it's in any way different than the traveling used to be before. Obviously, outside of the obvious things like wearing a mask and showing extra documents, but other than that, I did not notice a difference. As far as lines, it's the same thing. I would say that in the past couple of months, it has been even less than that. I didn't notice huge long lines. Yes, there are lines, but they're moving very fast. Even at the check-in at the airports, it's the same thing. You have the same amount of workers. And then when you go up, it's the same amount of people. Everything is open, cafes, bars, now even lounges in, well, in Greece, only in Athens, lounges are open. On the islands, they're still closed. But the lounges are open in Italy. They've been always open. They've never closed. And things are just as normal. So I don't know what most people are talking about when they're saying that it's just, it's insane at the airports because it hasn't been my experience. I'm not saying it's not, it hasn't been like that for another pe other people. But again, I just don't want to feed into the fear of you guys traveling Europe because it's not like that. And I showed you guys direct footage from the airports. You guys saw it with your own eyes. What I saw, you guys saw in many of my videos and any of my travel updates videos, you guys saw the airports and how many people and it's really, it's the same exact thing, guys. I did not notice any big changes as far as how many people are in line or how slow the lines are moving or the process has changed. If anything, it was, I feel like not as many people traveling. So um, even when you have to go through the scanners and stuff, it's just been so fast. It's, it's usually I stand for at least good 20, 30 minutes in the line, taking the belt off and shoes and whatnot. And I don't know, it's been, it's been extremely quick and, and an easy process. As long as you guys have all your documents together and just, 
your like regular stuff <laughs> you know it's it's fast guys so please please don't worry about it i you know my personal experience has been nothing like what a lot of people are saying it's it's really efficient quick and easy and i didn't notice anything different okay so then um another thing that i wanted to tell you guys what can and might happen is your flights can get canceled in europe and i know some of you have been already sharing with me that that has been your experience and what i can tell you guys that it does happen so please make sure that you of course check in with your airline and see what's going on and just to have kind of backup plan just so you know in case this gets canceled what is going to happen it happened to me actually in athens guys it had nothing to do with um with what's going on right now in Europe, what happened is Italy went on strike. <laughs> well, not the entire Italy, the Fiumicino, the airport, people who worked at the Fiumicino airport went on strike. So they sent me an email. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think it was 24 hours prior. And they told me that this is what's going on and my flight has been canceled. So what I decided to do, because of course I was flexible with my time. So of course it's not, I understand it's not a vacation for me. I mean, I live here in Europe and I was in Greece for my, my YouTube, but what I did, I just booked another place in 24 hours. I had another apartment in Athens and then the airline actually rescheduled me for the next flight in two days. So I just wanted to let you know, guys, that this can happen. Please stay calm. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Really, what can we do? This is this is our reality. This is how things are. Don't stress. Just go with the flow. In case your flight gets canceled for whatever reason, just have a backup plan. Of course, they will reimburse you for your tickets. It's it's obvious, and you know just. Just take it easy, guys. Just be flexible because if you plan on traveling to Europe this year, this is the theme, guys. You have to be flexible and you have to you have to stay stress-free because this is a vacation, guys. You can't stress out on your vacation. Vacation's supposed to be supposed to be nice and calm. All right. And what else? So we talked about the airports, flights been canceled hopefully not for you guys and not going to as many countries as possible and another thing that i wanted to mention guys well two more things okay of important pieces of information what i wanted to also mention is that if you are not vaccinated in europe now most places have green pass and what that means is that if you want to go inside to any place, be it a bar, a restaurant, a movie theater, a gym, it's different for every country. Every country has different rules when it comes to where you can enter and what you can do, etc. So if you are not fully vaccinated, what you can do if you want to enter a place, if you need to enter a place, because, for example, if you are going to Rome and you want to go to Vatican Museum, of course, you will need you will need some form of a, of a document, right, to, to be able to enter. So what you can do is you can get antigen test. And this way you will be able to enter whatever place you need to enter inside. So like I said, let's say in Rome, you're, you know, we're talking about Pantheon or Vatican Museum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you do have that option. It's not only... If you're fully vaccinated, you can enter. And then if you're not vaccinated, you can't do anything. Of course, you can. It is. It does make your life a bit harder, but you can still do it. And you pretty much, there are so many places to do antigen tests. One thing that you need to keep in mind, because I believe that in the States, in most places, antigen tests are free. And in Europe, there are a few countries where antigen tests are free, like, for example, Germany. 
but in a lot of European countries, they are not free. So you will have to pay. For example, here in Europe, well, I'm sorry, here in Rome, I just um, had an antigen kiosk near my place where I was staying and I stopped by to see how much it's going to be so I can share it with you guys. And it was 22 euros. So I just saw it a few days ago. Now, one thing for, uh, for Rome is that quick antigen tests that are done at kiosks, they will be about 22 euros. If you're doing it at the pharmacy, it's going to be about 15. So you will be saving a few, a few uh, euros. But of course, the ones at the kiosk, a lot of times they're open even on the weekends and they are a bit quicker. So if you need that antigen test to enter the sites, just go to a kiosk. I'm going to have a video next week coming out showing you guys where you can get it done in Rome and get the test. You will get the results in a few hours and you're good to go. So I would even recommend doing it maybe either early in the morning or the day before. So you know that you've done it, you have it, and then in the morning you can go and, and go to all the sites and museums and whatnot. So you can still travel Europe, guys, if you are, even if you are not fully vaccinated or you're just not vaccinated. Antigen tests, they're just uh, another great alternative for you discovering Europe. All right, and what else? Oh, and last thing that I wanted to say, guys, is that please make sure that you have everything reserved in advance. Most countries nowadays, they want to make sure that you have everything reserved before you get here. So this is definitely not the best time to just improvise and be like, okay, I'm just going to go to Europe and I'll reserve this place. But then once I get there, I will reserve that place and then I will see what else. I would recommend to have all the hotels or Airbnbs and tickets and whatnot already reserved. <laughs> Ciao, Carlo. I would just have it all already reserved and ready to go for you guys. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that make sure that you know the cancellation policy for every single thing because things might get canceled, guys, be it your hotel, be it your Airbnb, as I mentioned previously, the tickets. So just make sure that you really... <laughs> Grazie, Carlo. <laughs> so just make sure that you um, know what is the cancellation policy for everything that you will be reserving. Okay, guys, it's very, very important. And finally, guys, I wanted to mention that, of course, this year, no matter where you go in, be it Italy, be it Spain, be it Greece, be it Portugal, be it Malta, anywhere, guys, it's going to be just a little bit more challenging to enter places. <laughs> I know, I know. It's going to be a little bit um, a little bit more challenging to enter places only because now places have a very limited capacity. So, for example, if you're planning on visiting Pantheon, they might have only X amount of people that can enter at one point and same for Coliseum or same for even beach clubs, as I was talking about them guys in Greece they can't have as many spaces as they used to. So there are a lot of places where you go and you will hear, I'm sorry, we're at full capacity. You can't enter or you can't, um, you can't, or you have to wait or come tomorrow, or I'm sorry, we're booked for the next, for the next week. So I just wanted to guys give you a very good and clear idea of what to expect when it, you, if you plan on traveling to Europe this summer, or, or this year, for that matter. Let's see what Carlos says. <laughs> eh sì, si, dovevo tornare. <laughs> so guys, I hope uh, you find this information useful. And I just wanted to, again, remind you that I left that website, that super important <laughs> website, in the description down below, 
I also have links to the PLF form for Greece that you need to fill out. Everyone, it doesn't matter if you are vaccinated or not vaccinated, to that PLF form in the description below for Greece and the same for Italy. So if you are planning on traveling to Italy, you do need to fill out a separate PLF form. It is not the same form, guys. So make sure that if you are traveling to Greece and then maybe to Italy, you do fill out both forms. You will need each form for each country. Okay, guys. So I left you those forms also in the description below. So you have the links for the website. You have the links for those two uh, PLF forms. And yes, if you need, guys, anything else, as I said, make sure that you're leaving me a comment below and I will make sure to answer everyone, guys, and to make sure, hopefully in my way, anything that I can do, guys, to make your trip to Europe as pleasant as possible. And I just want to end this live, guys, by telling you that, honestly, Europe has been absolutely amazing, incredible. I walk around Rome right now and it really feels like nothing, not much changed, really. It's you don't have to wear masks outside you unless you want to of course everything is open the weather is absolutely stunning you don't really feel what sometimes news are telling you because in the news it seems like it's the end of the world in europe but it's really not like that business operating are operating as normal things are open tons of tourists around it's beautiful guys it's in italy and the same for greece Let's see what we have here. Hi, Anastasia. Thank you for all the updates. Would you happen to know if tests are required to go to Santorini or Mykonos and back to Athens if vaccinated? If you are fully vaccinated, guys, you do not need a test to enter Greece, to travel in Greece. Okay, guys, you definitely don't, don't need to worry. If you're fully vaccinated, if you've been vaccinated for at least 14 days prior to your flight, you guys are good. So no, no tests are needed. The only time you will need a test, even if you are fully vaccinated, and if you are coming from the States, I don't know what are the rules of other countries. I've been very closely following U.S. because obviously I'm a U.S. citizen. So if you are coming back from Europe to the U.S., you do need a test. Even if you're fully vaccinated, U.S. still requires you to have that test. So you will need to do a test on your way back. But if you are going to Greece, you don't need a test to enter Greece and you don't need a test to travel between the islands and you don't need a test to travel back to Athens from the islands but you will need it when you will be flying back home, most likely. That you have to check, that you have to check with the country requirements, okay, of your country, of your home country, where you will be coming back to. Thank you for all the information, it's very useful. I'm so happy that, I'm so happy. Is it possible to book ferries around the Greek islands a day or two in advance, or would you recommend booking way in advance? Jessica, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? So I traveled Greece for five months and I always booked my ferry tickets directly on the Greek islands at the agencies because I always thought to myself, why would I be paying extra doing it online if I can go and get it directly at the, at the ferry representatives? And I booked my tickets usually a few days in advance, and I never, ever had an issue. Of course, it depends if you're traveling in the middle of super busy seasons, right, which are pretty much over at this point, then I would say, yes, reserve it because you never know, you never know. But you guys will be traveling if you're traveling, let's say, in a few weeks and it's we're already in September, October, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't wait a day before but i would definitely i don't see an issue doing it three four days before you should be fine but again if you just don't want to have any stress on you then then go to let's say ferryhopper.com and and get it there i just i just wanted to kind of let you know guys i never had an issue buying a ferry ticket a few days prior to 
to my departure. And yeah, I just like the fact that you can go there. You can actually, you can actually get the ticket. You don't have to pay extra to a third party. And they also update you on all the current rules and regulations. So if you're worrying, okay, can I travel from Mykonos to Paros? What do I need? Things like that. They're actually very helpful there and they can always tell you, listen, based on the newest rules and regulations, you need this, this, and this. And I asked them a lot of times those questions because first of all, of course, I wanted to know and I also wanted to share it with you. So they're very helpful there. So I hope that that answers your question, Jessica. If you want to completely just not worry about it, then of course you can get them in advance, but I don't think that that will be an issue getting them uh, once you get to the island or to Athens. Let's see. You are the best, you know, every tip for travelers. I love you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you guys. I try, I try to stay on top of all the things for you guys because I know how it is traveling, let's say from Canada or from the States or from far away. And I try to stay on top of every single thing for you guys. Thank you for the feedback. It's very appreciated. You got it, Victor. Have a have fun. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy your travels, enjoy your vacation. Good morning, fabulous. Only Anastasia's channel can have a grown-up man wake up at 5 a.m. saying fabulous. <laughs> I love it. You made my day with that comment. Thank you so much. LT, I was just um saying that I don't know if you've been uh, watching this live from the very beginning. I just left a very important piece of information in the description down below for those of you who are just joining. It's a website. It's a great website that was created by European Union. And pretty much on that website, you can go, you can enter the country where you will be traveling from and the country where you will be traveling to. And it will tell you exactly what are the current, current live requirements for you are so this is so so helpful because this way you don't need to figure out and constantly search the web what's going on what do i need and this website is also great because if you have any transits let's say you're flying from the us to greece and you have a transit as i said previously in london right or in italy or in spain and you're you're thinking, goodness, do I need do I need this or do I need this paper? How do I transit? Pretty much this website will give you the entire breakdown of what you need specifically for your travels. And I left the link to that website in the description below. But just one more time, and just in case, it is, I wrote it down for you one moment, it's reopen.europa. E U R O P A instead of E, it's A dot E U. So it's very, very helpful, guys. It's it's they update it constantly. It's just it's gold, guys. It's gold. Just have it at um, you know, at, at your fingertips in case you have some emergency and you just need to figure out this is this is so good. It will give you all the quarantine requirements or testing requirements, what you need, what's the current situation in those countries. So this is really, really good. <laughs> Thanks, I will go back and review the website and thank you for the video on not renting a car in Athens. I didn't rent one, but your video helped me. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely don't do it, guys. If you can, if you if you can stay away from renting a car in Athens, you will do yourself a huge favor. And the public transportation in Athens, it's so good, guys. It's so good. It really, there is just no point, really, unless you needed to go somewhere really, really far away. But even then, I would more rely on uh, on taxis than anything. Let's see. Your tip helped too much, so big thanks. Keep it up. Thank you. I, I definitely will. Um, Anastasia, have you seen any big cruise ship among the Greek islands, like Celebrity on a region? Oh, yes. Yes, I've seen big cruise ships. I didn't include them in my video for the uh, as aesthetics. <laughs> I can never say that word. Aesthetics purposes. But yes, I've seen cruise ships. However, they were all European. 
I haven't seen one American cruise ship. They were all either Italian or I believe from Spain, but I haven't seen one um, cruise ship from that's coming from, from us, from the States. Thank you so much. I'm going next week. Yeah, Jessica, I can only imagine the anticipation, the anticipation for the trip. Have the best time. You're going to love it. Love it, love it, love it. Share with the community once you're back, because of course, people who are planning and traveling, everyone wants to know how is it. So definitely share it with us. Yvonne, hello from Ireland, and thank you for the helpful link. Hi, Yvonne, good morning. Well, good afternoon already. And uh, let's see, there are so many updates to keep up with. Great to get one website that has it all. Thanks, Emilian. Exactly, Yvonne. There's so many updates. That's what I was um, talking about at the beginning of this video. So many updates are constantly throwing at people and Everyone is trying to figure out if this is the latest update. Is there a more current update? And of course, you also have to check the source of those updates. So this is good, guys. This is this is probably one of the most useful websites out there. And uh, Rahul says, hi, fabulous. Regards from India. Hi, Rahul. Hello, India. How are, how are you? How are the things in India right now? Um, your Greek travel videos were epic. Such great practical travel advice. Thank you, Yvonne. It's time for it's time for Italy. Tons of Italian videos are about to come at you guys. I hope you're ready for them. Speaking of Athens, what was the name again of the restaurant with the beautiful 360 views? Um, so the there were two that I mentioned. The one was for brunch, all day brunch. And so if you are hungry in the morning and you want to just get that right away, that I don't even know how to say it because when I saw it for the first time, I was left speechless. So if you are looking for good breakfast place or all day brunch and you want to get that right away, that picture of, of uh, Acropolis right in front of you. So you just kind of, become for a second breathless because it's just such a gorgeous view when you see it for the first time, then go to Ciel. It's spelled C-I-E-L. And there on the rooftop, that's when you get that experience. See, I couldn't even find words, guys, because it was just so, I didn't expect it. That was my first time in Athens. And I remember going to that rooftop, sitting down and then turning. And there it is in, in all its glory, the Acropolis of Athens, it just blew me away. So for, as I said, breakfast and all day brunch, it's seal. And then if you want to go and have something very special in the evening time with the views of the Acropolis, probably as close as you can get to the Acropolis, then the Acropolis Museum has dinners but only, 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 guys, every Friday and Saturday. So if you are in Athens on Friday or Saturday, then you can definitely go and enjoy that special experience at the Acropolis Museum. It's cool because they close the museum, so you feel so exclusive. You go to the entrance, and the guards who are at the museum, they uh, they look at you, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, we're closed. And and, and uh, I remember I said, oh, I'm just going to the restaurant. And they're like, oh, excuse me, please. <laughs> I know it's silly, but it was really cool. You just felt so exclusive because you were pretty much the only one at the museum. And uh, everyone was coming out and you were going in. It was It was really cool. It's worth it, guys. My favorite part about that dinner was, of course, the views were, you saw it in the video. And obviously, you guys know, videos never do justice to the places. You have to see them with your own eyes. But the piano performance, that was just beyond. It was something so incredible. I still, to this day, remember it. I think I stayed for another extra, at least good 30, 40 minutes, just to listen to the piano. It was really phenomenal. So... If you're looking for that kind of romantic experience on the rooftop and you want the views of Acropolis as close as you can get to them and really good food, I wouldn't say it was the best meal of my life, 
but it was pretty good food. And of course, the experience of the piano and just the entire ambiance than Acropolis Museum on Friday or Saturday. All right, let's see. Mm, great info as usual. Annie, thank you. Hi, Annie. <laughs> We're all patiently awaiting your Italy travel videos, especially for the recommendations of where to eat and where to shop. Yes, Simone, they are coming. They're coming. They're in works, guys. I've been filming. I'm not kidding. I've been filming day and night, day and night, day and night, because I know Rome with my eyes closed, and I said that before. And for me to select what I really want to show you guys is the hardest part because I just know so much, but then I'm going to end up just with 15 minute videos and obviously I cannot do it. So it's it's a very different approach that I'm taking to showing you guys Italy than when I was showing you Greece. Um, let's see. Here, welcome Modolas. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Hi, fabulous people. <laughs> your videos have been so helpful and I love your energy. I'm heading to Italy and Greece in October. Yes, can't wait. Please give uh, us shopping tips for Italian leather shopping. Ooh, do you guys want a video on it? I'll be happy to do it for you because as you guys know, I am a, a personal shopper and personal stylist. And of course, I know some incredible places here. And yes, of course, leather goods are in such a high demand. And this is Italy. Where else would you buy leather other than Italy? So I'm happy to to make a video on it guys for you right now all the places are closed because it's august and when i tell you guys that italy stops in august no one believes me and i just wanted to reiterate the point but it really just it everything is closed i mean everything all the italian are on the beach just enjoying the last days of the summer so i will make a video on it once everything is back to to normal and it, i think it's going to be probably the first week of september so i will make a video guys and i'll give you tons of shopping tips for rome italy i mean i know it you know with my with my eyes closed so i know the all the stores and stuff like that all right let's see these new regulations are in place everywhere currently i'm going to machu picchu in two weeks and you have to get tickets before scheduling because there is no same day greetings from me. yes 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 it's the same for it's just how it is this year if you are traveling to europe or anywhere in the world you have to you have to make pretty much everything just reserve in advance especially yes your accommodations it's also very important and tickets yes uh peru i because i was wondering that when you said uh p i was like I need to check it out. I need to Google this place after this live because I have no idea where that is. <laughs> uh, so thank you for clarifying that that was Peru. And LT says, I loved Italy. We had a great time there to all of you go and enjoy. Yes, Italy is incredible. And the thing is about Italy, and I know I'm a little bit biased because I actually moved from the States to Italy literally just for Italy it's just been oh it's just been this place it, it I never get tired of it there is so much so much to explore here so I can't wait to share guys Italy with you even if you already been here before so maybe next time you know if you want to come to Italy this is just something that you can definitely um find out about Italy I'm going to show it to you guys from with my eyes, from my point of view, and hopefully it will give you a lot of useful information that maybe you just, you don't know. Anastasia, what is the mask culture like in Greece? Do the locals appreciate mask wearing? Is it considered rude not to wear one? LT, honestly, the only thing that locals <laughs> care about right now is first of all, that they don't have to wear it. Most of them are so happy about it. And then the second, if you go to the restaurants or bars, they're just so happy you're there and they have a customer that they, I mean, they, they most of them, they can care less. I'm, I don't know, you know, how, 
what kind of other way to put it? It's just how it is. They're just happy that you are there and they have a customer. And they're very relaxed about, about wearing masks, honestly. You will see people wearing masks on their forehead, <laughs> over here, just anywhere but where it's supposed to be. Most of them, you will see some people, of course, wearing masks. But other than that, everyone is super, most people are, I don't want to say everyone, most people are very relaxed about it. Outside, just like in Italy, in Greece, in Italy, masks are not um, mandatory unless it's very crowded place, but even in super crowded places, no one pretty much is wearing masks. So, and no one really is controlling that. And then when you go inside, you do, of course, you put a mask on, you go inside, but it's super relaxed. I mean, I feel like in Greece, even more relaxed than in Italy, because I've seen people in Greece even walking in very quick and grabbing something without a mask. Here in Italy, it's a bit, I can see, maybe because I'm in Rome, I can see that it's a little bit more strict. So people are putting the mask when they go in. Now, in grocery stores everywhere, I've seen people, I mean, it's it's obviously there's no even, you know, compromises here. Everyone, as soon as you enter, you put a mask on. That's throughout Greece and Italy. So I hope this answers your question. Pretty much, don't worry about it. Super relaxed masks in Greece. You will you won't offend anyone, you know, no one will think that it's rude, absolutely not. You can't imagine how Greek people are happy that they don't have to wear one. It's like, oh <laughs> I can breathe. I mean, so many of them are talking about it and same in Italy. So just don't worry about LT, you're good. Mm, ciao Bella, ciao Carlos, ciao. Jen, uh, good question. LT, how is the mass culture different from Athens versus islands? I would say in big cities, things are just more reinforced. And that goes, as I said, for Athens, that goes for Rome. I've seen on Greek islands, things have just been more laid back. For example, as I said, in on the Greek islands, and of course, I'm not going to name any places or anything, but I've seen people, you know, walking into the restaurants and cafes and not even being asked for a green pass or vaccination card or anything um, like that. And when we were in Athens, obviously things were a bit different. You, as soon as you enter, you have been asked to, um, you know, to show your, your vaccination card or a green pass. Not everywhere though. I, been to a couple of places where no one asked me for it so but as far as masks i would say again on the greek islands it's a bit more relaxed than in big cities and i feel like it's everywhere i'm sure if right now i go to sicily in italy it's going to be like that things are going to be way more relaxed than they are here in rome especially in rome center things are way more controlled here guys than you know than on the you know, in beach towns, let's say. I hope this answers your question. So the overall, guys, I know I can talk for hours about it. The overall feeling is everything is super relaxed as far as masks. It's your decision to wear or not to wear outside and then inside they are mandatory. But don't feel like you will be, you know, it's kind of rude to not wear masks outside. First of all, it's a, now you're allowed to do that and locals again, can care less, and especially business owners, the store owners, restaurant owners, bar owners, they're just so happy you're there. They don't care. <laughs> they can care less. Just, just, just come on in. Just come on in. All right, guys, did I answer all of your questions? I'm so happy. I'm so happy I did that. Oh, LT are saying one more, one more thing. Let's see. Are ATVs a good way to navigate the islands of Santorini or should I rent a vehicle? I will be in Oya for six days and Athens for two, but on Santorini, I was, I guess I was going to take a day or two to explore thoughts. Okay, LT. So here's the thing. I love ATVs. They're so much fun. They really, I... I think they're the coolest. I personally, um, as a female, of course, I love more a car and 
just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea, a price of the ATV on most islands and the price of the cheapest car, manual car, not automatic manual, are the same. As a matter of fact, in Mykonos, ATV was 10 euros more expensive than a regular vehicle, a manual vehicle. So with that said, just so you know, as far as prices, I prefer a car only because, uh, again, as I said, I'm a female and I want to arrive to whatever destination <laughs> I'm going to um, with maybe nice hair and looking nice because ATVs sometimes they can limit you again is if you're a female now if you're a female who can care less then more power to you but if it's me you know sometimes I want to wear a dress and I want to have my hair done if we're going to dinner somewhere etc and with ATV obviously you have to wear a helmet you can't really wear a dress I mean, it depends on the dress. If it's buttoned down, you know, you can improvise, but still, it just, it's its different for, I think, for females on ATVs than, um, than for males. For example, during the day, if you're going to, let's say, to the beaches on ATV and you're wearing shorts and things like that, it's totally fine. It's cool. But um, you know, but in the evening when you want to look good, and you are heading to a place and you put all this effort into doing your hair and you want you brought all those beautiful dresses especially for santorini you know i'm sure your your wife is going to bring some really pretty dresses <laughs> and then you end up on atv with a dress you know with half of your butt cheek showing and people are looking and you're trying it just it's not as it's a great idea but you know if you think with uh with uh, with the female brain a lot of times you just you you're like oh god oh this is not the you know the best way to uh, to travel right now so just <laughs> just letting you know what's going through female head because guys you know we think very differently about those things so i personally love uh you know i love i love renting a car because you don't have to put a helmet on you can wear whatever the heck you want to you you know your makeup is not running because of all the heat and everything so you arrive in one piece the way you get in the car the way you exit the car is exactly the same whereas with atv uh yeah it's it's a bit different all right <laughs> Thanks for the guidance and the price. My wife will appreciate the advice on looking nice. I didn't think about that. I know you guys, and it's it's just how it is. You know, we female we think completely different about things than you know than than you guys. It's just how it is. <laughs> Thank you. I hate having helmet hair. I know. I <laughs> I know. ATV had day all day. Yes, exactly. You know, if I just, if I'm going to the beach and I know I'm going to be swimming and diving and whatever, it doesn't matter. But in the evening, ooh, yeah, it's just, no. Mm -mm. And even if you slick it, and I know men are like men exit in the chat, but even if you slick that hair back and everything, when you pull that helmet up, it's still gonna, the hair is still gonna be pulled up and then you have to redo the entire thing. It's just how it is, guys. Unfortunately for us females, there is no way, no way around this. All right, did I answer it all? <laughs> so you won't be taking a Vespa around Italy doing your travel videos. Oh yeah, Yvonne, you know, in the, in, the thing is in theory, it sounds so cool. But then when you have to think about it, like on the Vespa, you actually look really cool and you can do the cool footage. But then when you think about, you know, when once that helmet has to come off, unless I'm just going to be doing my videos with a helmet on and you guys will know the reason. <laughs> Last question. Sorry, but I appreciate you so much. No worries, LT, no worries. How is the weather in October? Too cold to swim? It depends on, you know, on October. But no, a lot of locals, you will see them swimming in October. No problem. Again, the weather in October most of the time is very, very nice. And you still have tons of tourists in October in Greece enjoying 
in the beaches and enjoying and swimming and whatnot. Of course, the weather becomes a little bit more unpredictable in October than if you ask me the same question, let's say about July, right? But it's still most of the time it's very, very good still. It's, um, it's swimmable. As a matter of fact, locals in Greece, they start to swim in March. I've seen literally tons of people in the water in March. I couldn't believe it. For me, it was still too cold, but for them, it was just perfect. So you will see a lot of people still swimming. But the great thing about October is that you have those amazing days when it's not super hot, it's not cold, it's just perfect. It's like perfection, perfection. Of course, you can get unlucky and, you know, the weather might play against you, but it, most of the time it doesn't happen. I love October. I love, love, love October in Greece and in Italy. And so you're good. You, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you still will be able to swim and enjoy really beautiful weather and less crowds and it's just going to be nice. Um, how long will you stay in in uh, in what is what is Hellas? <laughs> uh, I don't know what. So I don't know what, what are you referring to? I still swim in October in Greece. Exactly, exactly, Carlos. Yes, most people swim even even in October in Greece with with no issue. I hope that answers your question. Ah, in Greece, how long will I stay in Greece? I'm right now. I am in Italy. I've been in Greece for almost six months, almost for half a year. I will be back, obviously, I will be back. But right now I'm in Italy. Perfection sounds great. I booked October on your advice. I hope to miss the big crowds. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The, the worst is almost over <laughs> in the sense of the crowds for Greece this year. Because this is really, this is right now when all the, all the crowds, all the crowds are right now. because. Not only you have people from the US who are going on vacation, but also all the entire Europe right now is on vacation. I'm not exaggerating. And European vacation is very different than what we think about in the States. Here, you don't take a week off. Here, you take a month off. I'm not even exaggerating. Some of the Italians, well, most of them have been on vacation since 1st of August. I mean, everything right now is closed. I wanted to do, guys, for you a video on the street, best street food in Rome. And I have to wait for another week because everything is closed. I can't show you anything. So it's, it's just the, the European culture in most European countries. So you have not only people that are coming from Canada and U.S. and whatnot, but you also have the entire Europe coming um and and traveling and being on vacation and of course if you go to greece at the you know most the most europe will go to greece most europe comes to greece and italy and it's just the most popular destination so that's why you have so many people you have you have not only you know the the big guys the states and canada you also have the entire europe pretty much together with you there Okay, so you drink alcohol. If so, can you do a video on the best wines? Do you already have a video on that? Oh, yes, LT, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course I do. I have Eastern European blood in me, so of course I do. And I love my wines. Yes, that's actually a great video idea. So I will make sure to do a video on good wines to, to drink in Italy. Um, I just need to figure out if you guys would want me to do it per region because obviously every region in Italy produces their own wine. Or if you just want me to do kind of an overall idea of what wines are good throughout the Italy because I am going to Tuscany in about a week. And of course, you guys know Tuscany region is famous for their wines. But then not a lot of people know that wines in Lazio, which is the region where Rome is, Rome is the capital of a Lazio region, also has amazing wines and they're becoming more and more popular every year for their wines. And same goes pretty much for every region. So I need to figure out how to do this video because there are just so many good wines here. It's, it's hard to choose and it feels like it needs to be a few videos for you guys for sure. 
ti piace più in Italia, ma eh, certo, guarda, Italia è il mio paese, ho scelto di vivere in Italia um, e mi sono trasferita da America in Italia tanti anni fa e ho scelto proprio vivere qui a Roma, allora mi piace moltissimo. Però anche Grecia ha proprio un posto speciale nel mio cuore perché la mia nonna è greca e allora c'è sempre questo, già come ti ho detto, un posto proprio speciale eh, per Grecia perché ho un po' di sangue greca, però ehm, che ti posso dire, Roma è la mia città preferita e allora sicuramente passerò qui tutta la mia vita, però verrò in Grecia abbastanza spesso. All right, let's see. Please film in Tuscany. Yes, I am doing Tuscany, guys. I am going there. I have a collaboration with um, a spiritual retreat in Tuscany. So I will be going there. And not only, of course, I'll show you guys the retreat and everything, but also I will go to other places in Tuscany. So there's going to be tons of Italian content coming at you guys. Wine advice anywhere is great. It's true, LT. It's true. I oh, can wait for those Tuscany videos. Absolutely, it's coming, guys. It's definitely coming. I'm, I have tons of content ideas planned for you guys for Italy. I really want to take this country and to explore it from just north to south or south to, um, to north. I really want to really, really, guys, show you all the beautiful places in Italy because there are just so many. And of course, I'm going to show you Rome and Florence and Venice and Milan, et cetera, et cetera. But I also want to really take you deep into Italy and to show you some of those places that, for example, if someone from the States, a YouTuber from the States comes and he or she here only for, let's say, one week or two weeks and they show the most popular places, maybe they just don't have time to show those other gems in Italy or they don't know about them. And I just really want to make sure, guys, that I cover the entire Italy for you. Because let's say Sardinia, right, is one of the most, Sardinia, one of the most popular destinations for Italians here in Italy. They love Sardinia. They go there every single year. It's their secret spot. And For us in the States, most people don't know about it, or maybe they've heard about it, but it's not even registering because everyone thinks that Amalfi Coast is the it place. And I love Amalfi Coast so much, but Sardinia has been literally named for so many years the Maldives of Europe. And most people from the States, they never even go there. They, or, As I said, they never even heard of that place, or they don't think it's that big of a deal because they just don't know about it. So... I want to really emphasize some places in, in Italy, guys, that are incredible and that are all Italians know about, but maybe you guys just don't know about it because they haven't done that big of a publicity of, uh, of that place. Because Amalfi Coast, I feel like every single influencer on this planet has been to Amalfi Coast and done a video on Amalfi Coast. Whereas, let's say, Sardinia is less known. But I feel like if people start seeing what Sardinia has to offer because, guys, you won't believe that place. Then I think it will just uh, start generating a lot of, uh, also a lot of revenue and lots of, of course, people from all over the world will start going to Sardinia because right now it's more for Italians. And I know a lot of also people, Europeans from Norway and Sweden, they go there on vacation. It's just, it's a really, it's a hidden gem of Italy, truly, I mean, of the entire Europe. All right, guys, I've been talking for over an hour. I can't believe it. I just love talking to you guys so much. And it just, it means so much, this connection, you know, instead of just always me talking into the camera. So I always make sure to do at least a couple of lives every single month. So we guys can catch up and talk and I can answer your questions and you know, so we can connect. And uh, Jen, yes, absolutely. Shopping in Florence, I hear you. Tons of fashion and shopping videos are coming. I promise, promise, promise. As soon as the stores are back open, you will you will um, see a lot of a lot of shopping videos and um, 
and clothing videos and leather videos. I know you asked me for all of those. They will be on my channel, I promise. All right, guys, have a beautiful Sunday. Ciao, Carlos. Have a beautiful Sunday. Enjoy it, guys. Those of you ha who are heading <laughs> to Greece next week or in the next couple of weeks, have fun, guys. Have the best time. Have a blast. And uh, if you have any questions for me after this live, just, again, leave me, Yvette, exactly, Positano in Amalfi Coast, then leave me a comment below, and I will be so happy to respond, guys. And yes, I'll see you all in my next video. See you on Wednesday, guys, with the next video. And yes, big kiss. I hate saying goodbyes. I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>